Kan Shalom, all praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Luka Kadash, the Ba'onah study apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the hopeful elect is pushing his truth in sincerity. I want to focus on this, uh, this movie, which actually was shown on Netflix. And this movie is about Cain. I'm going to play this, uh, this trailer. And I want to show you um, how we're dealing with the same spirit of Cain that actually came back in Esau. You know, Cain, Cain came back as Esau. So it's the same, the same story where Cain actually murdered Abel is being played out on this earth. And I want to show you how... Um, how this is actually being played out on this earth and how Esau will come down upon predominantly upon the Israelites but on all the nations on this earth with that same uh, murder spirit trying to kill so let me just play this clip You should join us for a ride. Oh, Get out of my house. How are you doing today, Jack? I we need to talk. Do you have anything aside from being ambiguous and hostile? Hi. Hello? Who's Andrea? You never mentioned a daughter. We just met a few hours ago. So what do you want to do today? Bingo. I-20. I'm kind of out there, aren't you? Get out! Jack is beginning to think that you just crawled out of the ground. I was shocked to find out you had a kid. They have Andrea. This could be bad. What are you doing? Have you seen a young lady with a lip ring in here today? What's she look like? A young lady with a lip ring. Hey! Are you Derek? Yeah, motherfucker. How old are you? I have no idea, but I'm in the Bible if that means anything. I'm known as Cain. Probably just gonna go kill another room full of people. You are? Probably. Come on! I'm getting you out of here. I'm going to kill you. I am going to tear you apart and eat you. It's not because I want to. But I have to. What did I tell you? Let me die! So, yeah, man, as you could see, many signs been given concerning Cain, and the, the movie is called He Never Died. The other thing that you also should have noticed is that he was feasting on the blood. He had a murder spirit, which is, the, which is that spirit of Cain, that murder spirit. But in the end, you also saw a piece where he actually yelled towards a man, screaming he wanted to die. You know, so I'm, I'm still thinking about who that could be. At first, I thought it was representing the Most High. Then I was thinking about um, death being personified. But then also I was thinking about um Abel Abel's blood was actually uh condemning and testifying against him. You know, but if one knows who thinks who he knows what it is, you can just put it in a put it in the comment section. Now I wanna jump to this song from Charlie Kim. He's got the whole world in his hands. And this is this is um this was actually a song from um, a soundtrack from 
the movie and as I was listening to the lyrics because the lyrics are very simple there's this repetitive but the way how this um, the way how they created this this version of this song because you may know the song um, as a child song but this the, the way how this one is created is very sinister and really portrays the mind of Esau uh, Cain uh, from Cain to Esau you know I'm going to play this clip the song um, and you got to think about that we're dealing with Esau the earth is giving into the hand of the wicked Esau is striving for his totalitarian estate all the things like the blessing from from Isaac onto Jacob uh, on sorry onto onto Esau everything came up into my mind as I was sitting and meditating on this movie and listening to this song so I'm gonna play this song after that I'm going to grab a couple of scriptures this version is very it's very sinister man so I want to show you now from Cain to Esau and we have to show you who Cain is and what the Most High did with that uh, spirit upon this earth what type of spirit the Heavenly Father placed inside of Cain you know but first the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you that all spirits are subject subjugated onto what you did before so the same way in 1 Corinthians 14 and 32 and the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophets so the prophets that you see today upon this earth they've been prophets uh, they've been prophets in their past life before this is from the right hand side so the same thing the most High is doing also on the left hand side the same wicked forces and spirits on this earth are subjugated to return and to fall in the same lot that's the same thing with Cain and that's why I'm saying from Cain 
to Esau. So let's go to the story about Cain. Cain and Abel, the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. And Adam, Adam knew his wife. Adam knew had sex with Eve his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So when we go into the meaning of the name Cain. Strong's H7014, Cain, Cain. It says here, it says, a possession, the eldest son of Adam. So apparently they changed it because the name Cain truly goes in onto um, a stabbing weapon. Let's see if we can find it. Oh here you see a spear which is a stabbing weapon something produce a spear Cain the firstborn yep this is the true meaning of his name so let's go on back Boom. And in the process, in the process of times, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord Jehovah. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of the flocks and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So Abel came with a meat offering unto the Most High. And the Most High was, the Most High was pleased and he had respect unto that offering. But unto Cain who offered up fruit, the Heavenly Father had not respect and Cain was very rough. When you read these things, you gotta, you gotta continually think about the same situation that happened with Esau Edom. Understanding that Cain, Cain is known in the Bible as a spear or a stabbing weapon. Soon I'm going to explain as what Esau is known in the Bible and what with what he is blessed. Here you see a very important point how Cain was very rough and his countenance fell. And I'm going to explain what happened with Esau when <laughs> when he got when he got supplanted from his blessing and when he received the blessing from from Isaac and how he first of all wept, cried bitterly and how his mind changed and how his spirit was towards uh, Jacob knowing that his father would die pretty soon. It says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou rough? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt, be, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be, the, shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Yeah, according to your own actions you shall reap. Ye shall bear according to your own deeds towards the Most High. So you cannot complain. The book of Proverbs 21 verse 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. So Cain came with fruit. It's deemed as an abomination. It, it was the sacrifice of the wicked. Unacceptable unto the Most High. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. So the same way as how you see many people upon this earth, they sacrifice unto the Lord. But all the sacrifices, if, it's, it's, if it is not according to the, the will of the Most High, it's not pleasing the Most High. Many people are occupied in sacrificing unto the Most High, but they don't do it with the right mind. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. So he murdered his brother Abel. So when you go into the meaning of the name Abel, Strong's H 1893, Hevel, Hevel. It says breath, the second son of Adam and Eve killed by his brother Cain, a breath, 
the same thing as how you had a scripture of vapor, which is Abel is actually transitory. He came, he was there, and he got slewed, he got murdered, he got taken away. The same thing, there's a scripture, I also believe, in um, the book of Corinthians. Or is it in the book of James? It's in the book of James, Salakia. The book of James, chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 13. Go to know, go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into a such city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on, on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then it vanished. That's that breath. That's, that's the representation of, of Abel's life. He was there and then he left. That's why it's also referred to as transitory. Let's get it in, um, in the book over here so that we can go into... So that we also can go into the meaning of the word uh, vapor over there. Strong's G822 Atmis Atmis mm. So it's vapor it says mist and that's exactly that's exactly what it is you know it, one moment it's there and another moment it's it's he's gone you know, and not gone by itself, but gone by the actions of Esau. Or should I say, Cain before. Boom. Back. So it says, he murdered his brother Cain, uh, he, he murdered his brother Abel, a Cain, which means spear, a stabbing weapon, murdered his brother Abel, which means breath, a vapor, transitory. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. So he lied unto the Most High. Am I my brother's keeper? Is this not the same spirit which you saw inside of the serpent in Genesis chapter 3? The moment, the moment when there was being spoken concerning not listening, not obeying the Most High, and dealing with death, the serpent also lied. The same spirit is what you see in, in Cain. The same spirit is what you will see in Esau Edom. Being a lying, deceiving, cunning, a crafty devil, and a murderer above all those things, man. A bloodthirsty murderer. And said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground, which was testifying, testifying about what, what Cain had done. He murdered Abel. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened the mouth, to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So now he received the curse upon him for what he had done. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond thou shalt be in the earth. A fugitive and a vagabond. That is what Cain would be upon this earth. And who is the same spirit upon this earth as Esau Edom. Being a fugitive and a vagabond upon this earth. Let's go into the meaning of these words fugitive and a vagabond. Because Esau is committing crimes, atrocities. But yet he is running away trying to escape the punishment for the actions on this earth. Strong's H fifty one twenty eight. New air. New air. It says to quiver, totter, shake, reel, stagger, wave, quiver, uh, uh, quiver, vibrate, swing, stagger, tremble, be unstable. A vagabond. Boom. So let's let's go into the meaning over here. Let's look it up. Type in meaning. 
A person who wanders from place to place without a home or a job. That's Esau, man. Because the place where they belong, that's not where they are at. So they, 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 they go all over the place, all over the earth, looking for a place to stay. And they have no, they have no, they have no place where they can settle. Because you're continually being chased for what you have done. You're being chased for who you are. For being a deceitful, crafty, a murderer. And the curse being placed upon them is continually showing who they truly are. So there's no peace, there's no, there's no peace unto the wicked. There's no peace unto the wicked. So going on. A fugitive and a vagabond thou shalt be in the earth. What is a fugitive? If you want if you might question yourself like but what do you mean with fugitive? A person who escaped from captivity or is in hiding, and that's what he is. He's hiding. He's hiding for what? hiding for what people might do or what people can do unto him for being that wicked on this earth he's hiding for uh, the confrontation for what he has done on this earth he's hiding because the heavenly father placed a, 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 a curse on Cain he stripped him from his pigment wherewith everybody would immediately see and notice that this is that wicked on this earth that was punished by the Most High. And that's why his reaction was, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Because you would immediately know, like, that's the wicked, that's, that's Cain. And the Lord Jehovah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayed Cain, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, which is that mark placed on him, lest any finding him should kill him. And that's why that's why you couldn't take out Cain, because you would receive sevenfold upon yourself. And Cain went out of the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Edom. So then it actually speaks about the, um, the um, genealogy of, um, of Cain. So now we jump, now we're going to make a jump and I'm going to show you that all the things that you saw in Cain is actually what you will find in Esau as well. We have to go to the whole birth of Esau, Jacob and Esau. And I'm going to jump a little bit, man. Genesis 25 verse 28 and Isaac, let's get it. Boom. Mm. Okay, let me start at first. Uh, here it says Isaac's sons. Verse 19, and these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah the wife, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian, of Padanaram, the sister of Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled within her, so the children were already fighting within her womb. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And, and she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. This is the story about Jacob and Esau. And Jacob and Esau were already fighting in the womb of uh, Rebekah. Esau representing the descendants of the Caucasians upon this earth. And Jacob is the representation of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians upon this earth, who are the Hebrew Israelites. They were fighting already in the womb. But if you go back to the story of Cain and Abel, Cain is coming back on this earth. He came back in the same spirit of Esau on this earth. And we are Abel who came back upon this earth. It's the same story, but it's, it's, it's a modernized way of dealing with the situation. That's actually what has taken place. And it says, um, the one people shall be stronger than the other people. We are that stronger people upon this earth. If you're looking at boxing, dancing, 
anything that is taking place upon this earth, the Jacob descendants are stronger than the descendants of Esau, and the elder shall serve the younger. It's going to show you that Esau is the older one, and Jacob came out afterwards. So Esau would serve the younger in the appointed time. It says, And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in a womb. But it's not talking about identical twins, because it's going to describe how Esau came out. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. They called this name Esau. This is the representation of um, the Caucasians who are living right now upon this earth. And it says red, all over like a hairy garment. Yeah, because their color, their color is being seen because they have no pigment. You know, and beside that, they're very hairy. They got a lot of hair, not only on their leg, but on their arm, on their everything. You know? And the name Esau, the name Esau, which let's go into the meaning of the name Esau. People say things like, yeah, you got black and white. No one is black, no one is white upon this earth. The Jacob descendants, originally their, their blood, their, their skin color is different shades of brown. The original uh, skin color of the descendants of Esau is different shades of red. That's how it is ordained. Strong's H, 6215. Esav. 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 It says Harry. Here it says Harry, but we understand the true meaning of the name Esau. Raised it away. What is raised it away? His pigment. They have no pigment, so you can see the blood through their skin. That's why it says they are red. After he stole this birthright for a morsel of meat, we're also going to go into that. He, his name was turned into Edom. And Edom means what? Edom means red. So let's go on. So it says, boom. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in the womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. The reason why Esau got described is because Isaac is a dark-skinned man, and Rebekah was a dark-skinned man. That's why, that's why Esau got described. You're going to see that Jacob is not being described because Jacob had the same skin color as his father and his mother. It says, And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on his heel, and his name was called Jacob, which means what? Supplanter. And Isaac was three scores years old when she bare him, to show you that his name is a supplanter. Strong's H. 3290. Yaakov. Yaakov. It says heel holder or supplanter. Very clear. And it's going to explain why it is the heel holder because Esau is going to receive uh, the rulership of this earth and we came after him. We are holding his heel and at a point of time we are going to pull him down from their, from their rulership and we are going to be in their place. And that's when, that's when the peace, the elder shall serve, the younger will come to pass. Which means in the upcoming kingdom, when this empire is taken down and we will reign in our kingdom to come, that is when the elder is going to serve the younger. So now it goes on. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. This is what you can see very clear also when you, when you saw... Uh, Cain in that movie you saw that very that hunter and killer instinct that killer mentality that anim that animality that animal instinct inside of him but also the way how he was feasting on blood drinking blood you know killing murdering people taking pieces of their body and, and eating it that same spirit is inside of Esau today that's why you got the elites, they drink blood and they do it all to rejuvenate them. It's all part of their satanic uh, uh, ritualistic uh, conduct, but also the way how they hunt on animals. You see them going on a safari, murdering, murdering elephants, murdering giraffes, and they have joy in it. They're holding it, they're putting it in, they're putting it in their house as a trophy, very proud for what they did. So they are that man, that cunning hunter, that man of the field. The same way Esau is being a cunning hunter towards the people. 
How is he hunting on the people by very crafty tactical ways? Laying snares for you, enticing you, using witchcraft against the people. And in that same way, he's gradually moving the people from the jab to the point where people are going to be facing with a mandatory uh, a microchip, which is the mark of the beast. That is, that's his cunning and crafty way. And then the world, the world is the field. He is running the whole field. He's running the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's ruling this planet. It says, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in his tents and we we are we are we are plain you know just in home chilling with some music or they might be outside just still playing some dominoes that's why people most of the time hanging on the corners sitting amongst each other just just communicating that's the spirit that our people are in it says and isaac loved esau but because he did eat of his venison but rebecca loved jacob so going on and jacob sought pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint so Esau came back from hunting and he was hungry and he and, and Jacob was actually uh, uh, cooking salt pottage when you go into the when you go into the pottage I believe he was making some red lentils Strong's age 5138 yep which is a soup Nazid yep. Nazid so, boiled food soup pottage things sudden or boiled so uh, Jacob was actually uh, cooking some red lentils. He was just cooking some red lentils and Esau came back from the field from hunting and he was hungry. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, which is the red lentil. To show you what red lentil is, uh, here it is. This is this is red lentil. Oh, you got it also here. Uh, I believe I also bought this one, man. In Dutch we say rode linse. But this is this is red lentils. And Jacob was actually he was just actually cooking this. Boom. Going on. Uh, and he also said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am fate, therefore was his name called Edom, which means red. I'm gonna show you that it means red. Strong's H-123, Edom. 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 Which means red. Edomite, Idumian, the descendants of Esau. Crystal clear. Going on. Boom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What do you mean you're at the point to die? The only thing that Esau had to do at that point was just a quick fast, but he was not spiritual. He was greedy. And for being in that estate already appointed, because this is about fulfillment of the Most High's will, his prophecy. He said, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? He was not spiritual. So he, he was willing to give up something important as the birthright so let's let's go into it birthright let me see what it says over here he was capable of selling his birthright for some food for some red some red lentils strong's h1062 bechora bechora it says and the form oh. just below that bechora mm -hmm. bechora okay birthright uh, primogenitor the right of the firstborn yep and you got to understand that Esau actually everything was bestowed upon Esau because he was the firstborn but everything was already established through the spirit of the most high that Esau would eventually the elder would serve the younger that's how it was ordained so he would sell that that's how that's how it came to pass he first of all he sold his birthright so now he gave he gave the rights to jacob and he fed himself that is what happened then jacob gave esau bread on oh, no, his first he said to swear and jacob said swear to me this day and he swear unto him and he sold his birthright unto jacob so now jacob has the has the has the has the birthright 
Jacob is now being deemed as the firstborn. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthrights. May you go into the meaning despised. Strong's H959. Baza. Mm. Baza. Despised, contemptible, contempt, disdained. He 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 actually despised, he deemed it worthless. He didn't regard he didn't regard his 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 birthright something worthy. He deemed it despicable. So he sold it for a mere morsel of uh, 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 lentils, man, red lentils. So now we go to the point after that Isa got supplanted for a stolen, a stolen blessing. This is how, this is how, this is how it goes on. Genesis chapter twenty-seven, verse thirty-eight. And Isa said unto his father, "Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Because Jacob came on a very, a subtle way." And he, he actually tricked his father to believe that he was Esau and he gave him also the blessing. So now Jacob has the birthright and he has the blessing which was about to be appointed unto Esau. And that's why Esau asked unto Isaac, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, me even also, O my father. And Esau lifted up the voice and wept. Haven't we seen this piece, this type of energy before? The same thing that happened with Cain. Let's go back to that piece. Here. His countenance fell. What happened with Cain? Cain got very rough and his countenance fell. You saw you saw the change in his in his in his facial expression. The same thing happened with Esau at the moment when he found out when he found it out that Jacob has his uh, his his birthright. And now, now he lost his blessing, and he wept, he cried, he cried bitterly. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of, and, uh, and of the dew of the heaven from above. And by thy sword, what the meaning of Cain was? Cain, a spear, a stabbing weapon. What is a sword? A sword is also a pricking, a pricking weapon. So Esau... The ways of the way man, Adwam, Edom, right now, being blessed with the same sword, with the same pricking instrument on this earth, is the same energy of Cain. It says, And thou shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. You see, so the Heavenly Father appointed Esau to rule this earth, by the way of the sword by the way of the sword Esau is ruling on this earth and Esau is not pleased with this what he received from the, from uh, uh, from Isaac he is not pleased with it so it says and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing by which his father blessed him and Esau said in his heart this day of mourning of my father are at hand then will I slay my brother Jacob so now the energy is being visited up again that same energy that you saw in, let's get it in the book of Habakkuk. The same energy that you saw in Cain is the same energy that you will see in Esau Edom. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The soul that is lifted, that is inside of the Esau, is not upright. It is, it's not upright. When you go into the meaning of what the word uh, not upright Strong's H thirty four seventy four. Yasher, mm. Yasher. It says to be right, to be straight, and to be level, be upright, be just, be lawful, be smooth. Esau is unlawful. That's why he didn't abide. He didn't abode in a righteous, a lawful sacrifice. The same thing is 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 taking place with Esau on this earth. Cain was unlawful, but also Esau is unlawful. That's why the scripture says it in the book of Hebrews. Let's get that quickly. Hebrews 12 and 16. 
lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So when you go into the word profane, you will find out what it means to be unlawful. Strong's G 952 Bebelos 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 It says accessible, lawful to be trodden, profane, unhallowed, common, a public place, of men, ungodly, which is outside of the temple. Outside of the temple. Esau is outside of the temple. He has no part of the holy, the holy uh, 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 keepings of the Most High. He is no part of the house of the Heavenly Father. He is outside of it. He is not included but excluded from the sanctuary of the Most High. That's them. They have no part in this. Because they don't know how to sacrifice and how to serve the Most High. It, J, um, Cain, tried, Cain tried. He tried to serve. He tried to serve the Most High. But he came with fruit. The same thing it is with Esau. Esau can serve the Most High because first of all it requires faith. Faith in the Most High and the fear of the Lord. Esau does not have that man. He, he has no fear towards the Most High. So, the book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse 8, right? It says, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So now we know that Esau is Edom. Esau's name got changed into Edom after he sold his birthright for a morsel of meat, for lentils, for the red lentils. And this scripture is going to show you that Esau is the wicked. Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, the people against whom the Lord had indignation forever. So according to the Bible, the Esau Edomites are the wicked, and the Lord has indignation. What does the word indignation mean? The Lord has indignation against them forever. Strong's H2194 Zaam Zaam To denounce, express indignation, to be indignant, to have indignation, to be indignant, be angrily indignant, be defiant, to be abhorrent, to the Heavenly Father is abhorrent, he is, he is angrily indignant towards the Edomites because the Edomites are walking this earth in the same spirit and the same energy as Cain was upon this earth. Job 9 and 24 The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth, the rulership, this present empire is given into the hand of Esau, Edom, a.k.a. the wicked. They rule this earth. He covered the face of the judges thereof, if not bear, and who is he? So, they changed the appearance, the outward appearance of the Most High. They changed the outward appearance of the second highest judge, the Redeemer. They changed the name of the second highest judge on this earth into Jesus. They changed his appearance. They changed his, 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 his purpose for who he got sacrificed. They changed everything. They blaspheme and they do all these things in, in pride and in arrogance and without any form of fear towards the Most High on this earth. Why? Because they are given this time to rule upon this earth. And they deceive, they being crafty, they being cold, they being murderous, they being, they being evil. They are just being who the Most High appointed them to be, wicked. Nothing but wicked. And again, the scripture says it in the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalm 17. Cain meaning a spear, a stabbing weapon. Esau being blessed with a sword, which is also a, uh, uh, a stabbing weapon, representing the uh, weapon, a weapon. The book of uh, Psalm 17, verse 13. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him. Talking about a people. Talking about Esau. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from who? from the wicked which is thy sword so the most is using Esau as a sword upon this earth to punish from men which are thy hand O Yahweh from the men of the world which have the portion in this life and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasures 
they are full of children they leave the rest of their substance to the babes that's what you see on this earth they rule they play they mock they they ju they just do it all and like it said Cain the man he never died when you when you look at these Edomites these Esau Edomites Esau changed into Edom Ites means people the people of Edom Edomites you look at Queen Elizabeth and this this creature is old 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 dusty but still breathing still breathing you might think like do these people ever die when you die man they live and it seems like they're never dying they're still they're still mortals but they're still upon this earth they, they do this evil on this earth but yet they prosper the book of Psalms chapter 73 verse 3 for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked many of our people get envious when they see the wicked prosper in their evil conduct upon this earth and they think like what does it profit me to do righteous what does it profit me to live righteously in an empire where the wicked is ruling why shouldn't I be evil and do the same thing as them many of our people become envious towards the prospering of the wicked because it's their time this is their time we are living in captivity under their rulership this is their heaven and we are catching hell and living in hell for there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm that's why when you look at them you might think like man they're still living you look at that Rockefeller you look at the Queen Elizabeth you look at all these evil creatures upon this earth and you think like man are they not when did they dying because they got the best they got the best surface because they rule in this earth that's why they've been this that's why they're strong if they need a heart transplant a heart transplantation they can fix it they are not in trouble as other men neither are they plagued like other men why because this is the time to rule that's why they can do evil and they can get away with it for yet a small time because the lord the lord requires everything that men have done upon this earth and everybody is going to pay for what they did on this earth it says therefore pride compares them as a chain violence covered them as a garment because they've been doing this for quite some time murdering people lying being deceitful you know uh, tricking people bribing or putting people up against each other invading stealing they've done they've done it all man unto this very same day they are doing it all they're using the propaganda they they set people up they use crisis actors they stage events they ju they just do it all this earth is their playground the heavenly father gave them power to rule so this is their time and by being in this time and they've done so many things and they got people in a state of completely being delusional not understanding what is taking place many of these edomites don't even know that they're edomites many of our people don't even know that they're israelites but the most High is opening up the eyes from the ones that are appointed to wake up in this wicked in this madness man it says their eyes stand up with fatness stand out with fatness they have more than heart could wish they got everything they got they got the federal reserve they can print money just just print they just create money but the, the creation of money is also linked on a, on a humongous extreme depth so they so they they just do whatever they want they got everything but it's still not enough now they're aiming for complete control over all all humans every every living creature needs to be controlled by them which is the complete lockdown where they're aiming at a, to a totalitarian state a totalitarian state a new world order that's what they're aiming after man and they want to fulfill it by the use of the microchip the mark of the beast and it needs to be placed in your hand he's got the whole world in his hand rule the whole world by letting you get chipped in your hand they want to rule the whole planet this is where the ESO is aiming after right now it says they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression they speak loftily yeah because they're very proud they're high-minded they suffer from a God complex they deny the Creator and they place themselves in the position of the Creator and while they place themselves in the position of the Creator they they laboring and they're working they're building the Freemasons they they are building their new world order their totalitarian state 
their, their building process is not profitable onto the people that are living in the system, man. Because it means your your prison is being built. Your mind is being imprisoned. You are being gradually steered towards the acceptance of becoming perpetual slaves being chipped by them and they will have full control over your chip. Oh, you want to get out of line? You don't want to listen what they tell you? They turn off your chip. That's where they want to aim at. That's what, that's what they're aiming for. They are laboring for this, man. It says, Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Yeah, because they got everything, man. All the resources to the crafty ways. They go into, they go into the continent, Africa. They, 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 they spread diseases. They give those people false hope, acting as if they're trying to help them out, offering them all kind of jabs against the disease that they're coping with. But inside of the jab is more poison and more causing people to die. But then yet, the same poison which they give the people to die in great numbers, millions upon millions, dying over there, they say, we gave you the antidote for this disease. You got to pay us. Oh, you can't pay? Well, guess what? We will take your resources. This is, this is the devil, man. This is the devil. He's murdering you. He's causing you to believe that he's helping you out. But yet in the, in the jab that he's giving you, he's, he's poisoning you in Africa with AIDS, with Ebola. People are dying over there, man. But they're being injected with poison. And yet this devil is asking money, money and portraying and acting as if he came there to help you. And the people can't pay because he charged you with a d <laughs> man. <laughs> This man charging them with, with, with that brutal type of money that they can pay. Oh, but now you, you got a debt. You got to pay. Oh, you can't pay? We take your resources. So now they, now they steal their resources. This is the devil. It says, and they say, how do the most high know? And their knowledge is in the, in, in the most high. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in the riches. These are the ungodly roaches on this planet. And they rule and they increase in their riches. But guess what? The Lord is going to judge them, man. They're going to be judged for what they've done, man. The book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. He's got the whole world, the whole wide world in his hand. And they want to lock, they want to seal the deal by the use of the mark of the beast, man. Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, which is the representation of the system, which is a a continuation of the Roman Empire and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed anybody that is not complying onto what they want needs to be put to death and pretty soon many people are going to get shipped to concentration camps man many people are going to get shipped into prisons everything that you see upon this earth is only going to increase they want their new world order you want to stand in their way they'll take you out they will take you out. So we keep telling our people, repent, return unto the Most High, get under that hatch, because if you don't got the Most High by your side, man, if you don't got the Most High by your side, when this thing goes down, oh man, you, you're done, you're done. There's, there's no other way of conquering this enemy of thinking that you're going to do it by yourself. There's no other way. Only to the Most High, you're going to conquer this enemy, man. And he caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, which is the Harakma, in the right hand or in the forehead. Now they're already showing you how they move, and gradually we've been telling you, we've been warning you over and over and over and over. We've been warning, we've been deemed the loonies, we've been deemed the crazy ones, we've been deemed as, the, as those bug outs standing on the streets with the Bible. Now you see the time, now you see, or now you should see with your own eyes where are we heading towards the microchip is being uh, introduced a so-called COVID uh, microchip to detect and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah the true thing is that this thing will be used to control you everything will be placed on this chip your 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 money your medical information you will be tracked and traced if you if you want to get out of line they turn off your chip get out of line they turn off your chip that's how it's going to be upon this earth it says and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark 
or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So if you don't, if you don't have this thing, this chip inside of you, you can't participate in the new established world. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred. Three score, one score is twenty, three times twenty makes sixty, and six, which is six six six. Which goes in onto what? High size stigma. Let's get that. Strong's G fifty five sixteen. Chai, Ksai, Stigma. Yep. Chai, Ksai, Stigma. Chai, Ksai, Stigma. Which shows you that when you go into the meaning of the word stigma, and I want to show you, but let me see if the stigma meaning Bible study tools. Here it is. Oh man. A mark. Scheiße. Here it is. A mark pricked or, or branded upon the body. To ancient oriental usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name of the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belonged to and there were even some devotees who stamped uh, oh yeah I can't read it anymore but it's actually a print or mark cut which can be printed or placed inside of you by a cutting because the chip the, the microchip can only be placed inside of you by a cutting by cutting the flesh you get it injected inside of your body that's about the microchip uh where am i boom boom here revelation so the same thing as the word mark let me bring out the word mark again it says it here Strong's G, 5480, Charagma. Charagma. It says, a stamp, an imprinted mark of the mark stamped on the forehead, on the hand, right hand, as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist, which is against the Redeemer. For the ones who still think that there's only one Antichrist, there are many Antichrists. Let's get that scripture, man. Um, I believe it is in the book of First John, chapter 2. Because you got people talking about some madness, the one and only Antichrist is coming. There are many Antichrists. This whole this whole system is an Antichrist system. It does not believe in the Redeemer according to the Bible. So this is an Antichrist system. Uh, here. I believe it was this one, right? Here. Second John chapter 1 verse 7 For many deceivers are entered into the world Who confess not Jehovah Shai is coming to the flesh This deceiver is the Antichrist But it's not the first that I wanted to bring out But it's also showing you Because you got people saying things like Yeah, the Lord, the Lord is a spirit Many Antichrists First John 2 and 18 Let's bring it out First John 2 and 18 Little children, it is the last time and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that this is the last time. For there are many Antichrists upon this earth. We're living in an Antichrist system. You know, we're living in an Antichrist system that is teaching people to believe in a so-called white Jebus. They change his name, they change his appearance. And if you got a problem with the truth that his name is Yahweh Shai, if you got a problem with the fact that he is a dark skinned man, if you got a problem with the fact that he's coming for his people and he's only coming to save the elect, that makes you an antichrist. You're against the Redeemer. You're against his purpose. You're against the true will of the Most High. You, you're against the Word, man. You're against the Word of the Most High. You don't believe in the Word according to how it is written. 
And that's why the spirit of the of the Most High is not dwelling inside of the people, man. They don't have the living water. The light of the Most High is not inside of them. And that's why they cannot speak according to what is written in the scriptures. Because they simply don't know. They don't know the Most High. They don't know the Most High. So back, back in the book of um, about the Mark, it says the Mark branded upon a horse, thing carved, sculpture, grave and work. It, it takes the cutting to to place this chip inside of you. So when you go when you go over here, Job chapter five verse twelve, he disappointed the device of the crafty so that their hand cannot perform the enterprise. The Most High is not going to allow them to complete the enterprise, the new world order, the totalitarian state. You know? The totalitarian state. The Lord is not going to allow it, man. When you go into enterprise, Strong's H, 8454, Tushia, Tushia. It says wisdom, sound knowledge, success, sound or efficient wisdom, abiding success. The Lord is not going to allow them to complete. When you go into the meaning of, uh, um, oh, I thought that this, this was the one. Here it is. Itaman. Uh, enterprise. When you type in enterprise. Here, enterprise. Here, boom. An undertaking, formerly enterprise of old French enterprise and undertaking. Here, undertake to take take in hand. What you will take in hand? The microchip will be taken in hand to complete the establishment of the totalitarian estate. The taking of the mark. The taking of the mark in your hand in order to complete their totalitarian estate, in order to succeed. But they're not going to succeed because it's simply not the will of the Most High that everybody is going to take this thing. Only the ones that are appointed by the Heavenly Father are going to take it. And they and when you take it, when you take it, you, you're appointed for destruction, man. But the Lord will take them down. Verse 13. He take it the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. So the Most High is going to completely destroy them after, they have, after the Most High has used them to deceive and to, to lead the ones that didn't believe in the Most High towards destruction. The ones that believe in the Most High, they will do the right thing and they will be protected. So, the book of Job chapter 20 verse, um, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old? Since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. Esau, the devil, knows very well that this time is almost up. The Lord is about to come back. And when the Lord is coming back, the Lord will take these devils out of their rulership, and he will cast them into the lowest part upon this earth. They will serve the younger. Esau will serve Jacob. That's what's going to happen. This empire will be taken down, and Esau will serve Jacob. That's what's going to happen. It says, Though His Excellency mount up to the heavens, and His head reach unto the clouds, even though they have done their evil, even though they have deceived masses upon this earth, even though the Heavenly Father gave them this type of power, where they got high-minded and they really think that they, they will escape for what they have done, the Heavenly Father says, Yet He shall perish forever like His own dung, like His own shit flushed away in the toilet. That is how they are going to disappear. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? We're going to look around and be like, man, where, where are the red devils, man? Where are the, where's the wicked, man? He shall fly away as a dream and shall, not, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. That's why you're going to hear many of them, the children, 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 children. They're going to say things like, well, but I didn't do anything. Well, but how can we fix this? How can we, how can we get into agreement? How can we live in, in harmony amongst each other? Well, there's only one way, the way of the Most High, the judgment appointed written in the Scriptures. I can read it for you. The Lord said, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So, you should know what's going to happen. I'm not going to change anything. I agree with my power concerning what needs to happen with your people. All I have to do, I have to tell you what's going to happen. You can just sit back and wait for it. Or you disbelieve it in your pride and think like, well, that's not going to happen. Because you know the spirit that is inside of the man. 
You tell them what's going to happen according to the scriptures. They say, I don't believe it. And you don't believe it. You will believe it when your ass is thrown where it belongs according to the Bible. His bones are full of the sins of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though his wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it on his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat and his bowels is turned, it is gales of asp within him, which is poison. He had swallowed down riches, he stole riches, resources, everything. Everything which they have is stolen. They didn't labor with their hard hands, blood, sweat, and tears for what they got. They stole it. And then they lie about it. Well, we discovered America. We came here. We are some uh, discoverers. Like, you you people are so fucking out of your mind, man. You people rape, rob, murder. And then you want to lie and twist and turn about what you did. That's that spirit of being a fugitive and a vagabond. They really think that they do these things and that they're going to escape because they, they're very crafty and lying and very manipulative concerning what they have done and what they do upon this earth. You may, you may trick people and you may think that you can get away with this, but you don't, you don't fool the Most High. You don't fool the Almighty Power. He sees you, man. Don't you know I can see you? The Lord, the Lord sees everything that you do upon this earth, man. The most I shall cast them out of his belly. Everything that you that you stole, you're going to cough it up. And it's going back to the rightful owners, man. Back to the most I who's going to give it to his chosen people, man. That's how it's going to be. So, verse 18. That which he labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it up down. According to his substance shall the restitution be and he shall not rejoice therein. Because he had oppressed and had forsaken the poor. Because he had violently taken away a house which he built it not. You went into people's country, man. You stole everything. You framed. You lied. You, you devils, man. Everything that you did upon this earth, man. The Lord says you will pay for that, man. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not, say, he shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his efficiency... He shall be in straits when they think they got they, they steal the deal when they think they're going to complete the establishment of the totalitarian state the totalitarian state the new world order that's when the most high is going to rain fire and brimstone upon them thunder upon them man. every hand of the wicked shall come upon him like how the scripture says you know in the book of isaiah let's get that man and that's a beautiful thing to read reading about how the wicked how the lord is going to judge the wicked man for all the hurtful things that they have done upon this earth and their pride, their pride, their pride, their pride in what they have done and really thinking that they are going to be, you're going to, they're going to escape. You, Man, <laughs> Isaiah 33 verse 1. Woe to thee that spoilest and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. It's going to fall upon their own plate for how they dealt with people, man. The Lord is going to repay them according how they did towards the people upon this earth. So do the math. If the Most I created you to be the bad guy, the wicked, the evil upon this earth, and everything that you can do on this earth is evil, and the Lord will punish you according to everything that you do upon this earth, how fucked up your life is then? Do, do understand, man. Do understand what it means to be... Esau, what it means to be a descendant of Esau, either, man. The moment when you're living in this time right now, you might think that you're better off. You might get big-headed or proud and arrogant in your evil. But the end is going to be the confrontation. The, 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 the moment when you wake up and you're going to understand, like, that's, that's why many people will say it's not fair. I don't want to be it. That's why nobody wants to be an Edomite. That's why the nation of Edom is so heavy busy with deceiving people and causing people to think that the nation of Edom, the descendants of Esau, are no longer upon this earth. Well, well I'm no Edomite. I'm not, I'm not Esau. Nobody wants to be Esau. But we know that they are Esau. And when you tell them, when you tell them, they get, they get, they get uh, uh, offended. You know, they're trying to convince you that you got it wrong. Esau is trying to convince you that we don't understand our scriptures. They are trying to convince you to believing in their lies. 
being crafty, being again that cunning hunter, not only in the field, in the earth, but as well the planet, the whole the whole planet is the field, as you can read about it in the book of, uh, what is it, in Genesis 25? about the angels, the reapers, the earth being the, being, being, uh, being the field. Um, so the Lord, the Lord is going to judge them, man. The Lord is going to judge them, man. It's going to get beautiful, man. And so the Lord, the Lord will bring it upon them in the fullness of, in the fullness of his efficiency. When he is about to fill his belly, the heavenly father shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eaten. While the Edomites are enjoying themselves, the Lord is going to rain it upon them. In the security, when they might think they retreat and going into the deep underground military bases, the luxury bunkers, the Lord will take them down, man. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of the steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body, yea, the glittering sword cometh out of the gills. Uh, terrors are upon him. Yeah, this is talking about the nuclear missiles, man, rising up out of the Shiloh. All darkness shall be hid in his secret palaces. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity. So now you see how it's being revealed, man. His deeds are being shown, made known. The same thing the Heavenly Father did unto, unto Cain. His action got, made, uh, got shown. Because because Abel Abel's blood was crying unto the Most High. That was the moment when he, when the testifying took place against him. He he was condemned. His own actions condemned him, and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from the Most High, and the heritage appointed unto him by the Most High. So now you understand why it said Jacob had the heel of Esau because Esau is going to get pulled out of his ruling estate and we will be in that ruling seat. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 7 Then answered I and said what shall be the parting asunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow it. We living in the empire where Esau is ruling. Esau has the world in his hands and he's trying to control complete the rulership upon this earth by placing the microchip the mark of the beast inside of everybody's hand that's how he thinks that is how he tries to complete the establishment of his enterprise and he said unto me from abram unto isaac when jacob and esau were born of him jacob's hand held first the heel of esau for esau is the end of the world esau's empire is going to end and we will pull him by his heel take him down and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. You see? So that's how this movie is going to end. And nobody is going to change it, man. So now Esau still, Esau still can rule upon this earth. And think he is in a good case. Let me see where it is. Now he's still ruling upon this earth. But, but guess what? Go ahead and rule Esau. You got your time right now. Rule upon this earth. But when it's time to be taken down by the Most High. When it's time to be taken down by the Most High, it's game over, man. It's game over. And these people are not even enjoying themselves, man. What's the scripture saying in the book of Lamentation? Lamentation 4, I believe it is, right? Let's get that, man. We end up with that. And I'm going to play the song one more time for Esau, man. Just to show you the energy we're fighting against, man. And the time that we're living in. Because we're truly living in some sinister times, man. Where we truly need the Most High. Lamentation 4 and 21 Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Eden, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass too unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and thou shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So now our punishment is completed. You know, the Most High is going, he's coming to redeem us out of the hand of the wicked. Now it's time for Esau, Edom, the wicked, who is ruling upon this earth, to get paid for what they have done unto us. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thee. And that's what's taking place right now. So one more time, we're going to play this song. Esau, man, from Cain to Esau, he's got the whole world in his hand. But guess what? The Lord is going to take them down. <laughs> 